Looking a little more closely at uh, the security of just the data itself, we need to be aware of the fact that data can become corrupted if the tables hosting that data become compromised. So you might think, well, how is the table going to be compromised if we implemented all the security features at the network level, at the operating system level, at the permissions level, uh, you know, all of that stuff has been taken care of, then what are the ways by which anyone might compromise an individual table? Well, the most common one to be aware of is what's known as a SQL injection. And this means that code is actually inserted into an application where it expects to see values. So at the top, what we're seeing is some kind of an application where a user is requested to identify themselves for authentication. So you can just see, of course, the user ID is inserted as user one, and then the password is entered as my password. And this is the code that is running behind that, if you will, uh, selecting star from the users where the user ID equals the enter they just valued and the password that they just supplied. So this returns all the information about that user. But if it's a, if it's a select statement, that's being processed in the background, then you open yourself to what's known as a SQL injection code. And that means that actual code is inserted into the field as opposed to a regular value. So again, this is certainly valid. This is, is what happens in the background. But if you enter in this code right here, then what ends up happening is this is what the select statement ends up looking like. Select star from users where user ID equals a closed off set of quotes, which means a blank string of characters, or one equals one. Now, when you submit any piece of criteria to the query, uh, query analyzer, it simply evaluates, is that statement true? And one equaling one is always true. It will always evaluate to true. From that point, you see various delimiting and or commenting characters being inserted because that prevents the remainder of the code from processing. So you see what ends up uh, at the bottom here, select star from users where user ID equals blank or one equals one. Since one equals one is true, it returns a list of all users. Everything else from that point now gets commented out because they inserted the characters that are treated by MySQL as the commenting uh, comment code. So nothing else processes. So you get a complete list of user IDs back and possibly the password, depending on whether or not they've been encrypted. So the SQL injection is, is fairly well known. Most developers are, are very aware of this, and that one equals one uh, has been around for quite some time. So, you know, it's uh, most developers and security experts are fully aware of this. Uh, but it also opens you up to simply having uh, malicious code delivered into the uh, the statement, such as a delete or an update statement. So instead of selecting you end up processing a delete statement to remove records or, of course, an update statement to change the values. So this is how the people who are you know, very skilled at attacking databases can, can gain access by simply inserting incorrect values or updating those to values that uh, should not be changed. So really what you want to do with this is to use stored procedures instead of a select statement to reduce the likelihood because a store procedure already contains the code. The only thing that's accepted, those values that are accepted, I should say, are passed in as parameters. So you cannot alter the actual select statement, even if it's in there. Uh, that cannot be altered. You can only pass in parameter values for the criteria. Now, that doesn't mean it's guaranteed, but it certainly reduces the likelihood because the front end application is only calling the store procedure that has the code stored on the server. So it doesn't accept code. Now, as I said, that's that's not a guarantee. It just reduces the likelihood, uh, which is always better, of course. So if you do have any kind of application, you generally want to make sure that it's calling stored procedures as opposed to just inserting values into a select statement, and you will greatly reduce the likelihood of any kind of SQL injection code.